My name is Melissa Simpson and I am the owner and curator uh, of the Blank Studio. Uh, I'm a fiber art studio. Uh, I love doing anything that has to do with fiber. I hand dye it, I hand paint it, I crochet, I knit, I sew. Um, and one of my favorite things to do since I was about you know, nine or 12, knitting. And I'm working on a specific piece that I kind of want to dive into because it has to do with Gnostic knitting. And um, I had the uh, the Scarlet Woman show up during the holidays and, and it wasn't very fun. You know, it had to do with lust and, you know, and I was, you know, kind of thrown under the bus. And, you know, having to come to terms with, you know, what that is, I mean, that never feels really good. So I really felt like I needed to take action and not become a victim. So I started doing some research on the uh, Scarlet Woman. And there's not that many references about her, the, you know, the obvious in Revelations. And there's different types of uh, religions, religions that have their own take on it. And then there's the Crowley version of it. And, um, you know, some people are finally starting to try to, uh, you know, through academia, uh, ex express who and what this woman is. But um, the Scarlet Woman is a lot more than lust. Um, and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. So anyway, um, invoking the Scarlet Woman. I first want to say that um, before I actually invoke her, I'm going to be um, remote viewing her. And how this all starts is, uh, you know, knitting up a piece of garment uh, that I'm going to be uh, wearing and then I'll photograph myself and do some artwork and then I think I'm going to probably turn that into my own tarot card deck. So uh, this one will be Lust. Although I see the Scarlet Woman is a lot more than just Lust. I mean, Lust is just you know, the mundane attributes of what this powerful divine feminine is all about. And, uh, you know, apparently she also represents uh, organized religion. And, you know, we have a lot of war on this planet involving religion and whose God is best, but we're not going to go there because this is all about, you know, the power of red and uh, divine feminine energy, taking back your power, not being a victim, and also uh, invoking your own love life, right? So like I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna start stirring up and creating that energy so that I can, um, you know, have a, have a fulfilled uh, intimate relationship moving forward. So now this sweater, uh, I thought was perfect. With working with the Scarlet Woman, in my mind, I wanted to go with something very romantic and Renaissance, right? So we're thinking of, you know, I'm thinking of like uh, Guinevere, 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 um, you know, that whole Renaissance silhouette which is a very simple silhouette, but it's also very appealing, especially for someone with, you know, my kind of figure. So I'm a full figure woman, you know, I'm large, uh, uh, chest, tiny little waist, and then the hips come out. So this silhouette uh, works well for me. And, um, you know, it's got that Renaissance vibe to it. It has a, a you know, the boat neck, uh, this is blouse number one from My Favorite Things Knitwear. And um, I, you know, I really like the silhouette and I love the simplicity of it. And the color came out great. So how this all happened was, you know, working with the Scarlet Woman. Obviously, um, I had, you know, this showed up in my life. Uh, and this, is, and I love red, especially for a blonde. And this is Rambler by the Woolly Thistle. 
this is a lovely yarn in the colorway Trillium. And I was going to do uh, like a lace shawl with it. And I wasn't excited about it. You know, I'm more interested in, in knitting garments. So I held on to it and I kind of kept it around while the Scarlet Woman was lurking about, you know, not kind of really paying attention, just, you know, noticing that these things are showing up in my life. And yeah, oh yeah, maybe I should pay attention. Then I thought, well, you know what? Knitting for Olive, which I just started using their yarn and I really like this yarn. I picked up pomegranate, which I thought was going to be perfect because pomegranate is, um, you know, you'll see it, they refer to it in uh, Solomon's Temple. So I loved, you know, talk about Gnostic knitting. You know, the pomegranate it was uh, all over the um, uh, Solomon's Temple, apparently, along with uh, palm trees. So the, the pomegranate, luscious red, it's a winter fruit, which I love, right? Uh, yeah, that's all in alignment with, um, you know, forbidden fruit. Uh, but when the yarn showed up, I thought, oh my gosh, this isn't pomegranate, this is rust. A little bit orange, but that's okay. I mean, it's still gonna kind of work. But what I did was I mixed it with this. And this is how I got this luscious fabric. I mean, look at the coloring in that. I mean, this is just, I love it. I mean, the color is spectacular. I mean, it is a true red. It's not burgundy, it's not orange, it's a really nice red. So I finished the um, left sleeve and um, you know, I'm gonna tell you this contiguous, I learned how to say it, contiguous method is like my new favorite thing, my go-to. I am so down with this version of knitting because look what happens. You, you have your um, raglan, which is right along here. So you are creating extra stitches on either side of this one stitch that's going down here. So you're building your fabric here and you're building your fabric here. But then when it gets to right about here, you do the opposite and you start adding stitches on the inside of the raglan. I mean, how fabulous is that? Like, why didn't I know about this before? So you can kind of see how that works. It's perfect. So um, I'm loving that. The boat neck is pretty good because I went super wide on the neckline. So I'm like, you know, out here. Right, I mean, it's like a very nice shape right about here because I started with a 10.5 needle and then went down to a 10, started going down into a 10. And then in the waist, I actually went all the way down to a nine because I really needed to get some shaping, especially with this, it can be a, a little floppy because you have the silk mohair but the, but the wool kind of, you know, keeps the fabric together. So I like structure uh, when I'm knitting garments. Uh, but I did, I do have a new acquisition that's coming up that's gonna involve mohair and just the sleeve. So I think that's gonna be pretty perfect. So uh, working on the other sleeve here, things are going well, it's looking good. Blocking is gonna uh, really work with this blouse. Uh, I did have a little bit of issue in my um, sleeve area, right in here. I've got a bit of a, you know, a ding, but that'll block out. But I made these nice and wide and I went super long on the sleeves because I need the drama. I need that Renaissance drama. And so that's happening. And when this is finished, I'm going to be um, creating a wrap and I'm gonna use some bulky weight from Wolfolk. And the color I think is gonna be pretty much spot on. Um, 
So in working with the uh, Scarlet Woman, of course, you know, pulling for the tarot deck, that's exactly what I got. She showed up. So I'm keeping her out for a little bit because I really want to study what this is and what this means. I mean, I already know basically what the basics are, but recreating this character and getting into character and remote viewing her and studying her and, you know, like Solomon uh, did with the uh, demons who built, you know, Solomon's temple. I'm going to ask her what, what she does. Like, what are your attributes? Where, where are we going with this? Um, and she sits on the, you know, the beast, end of all times, tri tribulation, all that stuff. And I'm not really ready to go there with her yet, but we will. We'll, we'll dive into that. Um, but yeah, the harlot, the whore, prostitution. I, you know, I don't know how I feel about prostitution. I mean, it's, you know, it's a woman's body. I mean, you know, I don't know. There's, it's, it's, it, there's so many slippery slopes with this subject. And that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to be discussing. That's what we're going to be studying. I mean, this is an, an academic approach to Gnostic knitting and creating a garment that uh, resembles the Scarlet Woman and how I can apply that not only in my own personal life, but for the good of all mankind. Because when you're doing this kind of remote viewing and this kind of work, it's not for the faint of heart. I would not recommend it to just anyone because even I am like feeling quite cautious as I should, as a responsible, you know, theologian, I guess I would call myself, self-proclaiming. Um, so she came up, and then next to her, right after her, came up Fortune. So I think this is a beautiful combination. So what I'll be doing is I'll be creating, you know, somewhat of a modern version, modern take on this um historical, mythical, uh, you know, Gnostic, divine feminine creature. And uh, I will be photographing myself in the um, wardrobe that I create. And I will be creating my own tarot uh, deck from that. Now, that being said, there's also that wonderful character in uh, Game of Thrones, the Red Witch, and her outfit was absolutely stunning. That wrap she had, like, to die for. So uh, I'm going to be building the cape and the wrap also as well to go with this. And I'm probably going to be doing, you know, I'm linen. I'm thinking, you know, a beautiful linen skirt. Uh, going with this uh, top, I think is going to be really gorgeous with, with maybe like a very stunning Art Nouveau, you know, big, huge hip belt. Um, I, I have the ring. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing with that. So this is going to be a different journey. There's going to be different segments that are going to take on that. And as I move forward with this studying, the uh, Scarlet Woman, I'm going to be uh, pulling up a lot of really interesting facts about her, which there are not that many. Uh, so we can, you know, have a conversation about what that looks like. And then I'll move on to the next project. Um, so anyway, uh, that's it for now. I just kind of wanted to touch base on how this project is going, how I'm developing it. Um, I did take a look at the Sophie shawl and some uh, uh, bulky yarn from Wolf Folk that I think is going to be the perfect color. I do like that shape. However, there's a possibility, which I've already started sketching up, is doing my own version of this cape because symbolically, I really like the idea that it's an infinity shawl. And when you're knitting, you're absolutely doing the opposite of everything that you're taught. You're actually going to twist your knitting so that 
it twists on itself and you create this infinity shawl. But I'm thinking, I thought what would be so interesting is maybe to do it with short rows so that one side of the shawl has like all this fabric that kind of can come up around and then the rest just, you know, wraps around. So we'll see. That's, that's uh, something that I'm thinking of moving forward uh, with this, uh, with my Scarlet Woman sweater that is, is coming along great. But I love the idea of actually putting her in, in a historical, uh, you know, landscape, especially. <laughs> Thank you. Oh.